no further introductions, it's now time for member statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. In early January, Hosting Canada announced the equivalent to the Oscars of the dairy industry, the 2014 Master Breeder Awards. The recipients across Canada are recognized for having mastered the art of breeding balanced dairy cattle with high production and outstanding confirmation with great reproduction, health and longevity. There were 21 recipients of the Master Breeder Shield, with 12 breeders specifically from Ontario, seven from Quebec, one from Manitoba and one from British Columbia. One recipient worth noting is from my riding, Albadon Farms in Teeswater, Bruce County. Owned by Josh and Marianne Ireland, as well as parents Mark and Debbie, Albadon Farms has a herd of 170 milking cows. As one of the top producing dairy herds in Canada, they were also chosen as the best managed herd from Ontario to British Columbia in 2012. This is a testament to the good work being done at Albadon Farms, that is, and it's rare that such a large herd has accomplished this level of excellence. And, Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to say that. This achievement has been all homegrown by the Irelands of Albadon Farms, just south of Teeswater, Ontario. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from Park Day High Park. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I stand uh, because on December 6, the Harper government tabled Bill C-36. It was response to a Supreme Court decision to strike down all existing prostitution laws because they put sex trade workers' lives in danger. Unfortunately for sex trade workers, the new law doesn't correct the situation but makes it worse, forcing the trade underground and putting women's and men's lives at risk. In response, we held a media event here in December. Alice Klein from Now Magazine, uh, sex trade workers' organizations were here. Plus, they were buttressed by 190 legal and constitutional law experts calling on the Premier and our Attorney General here to act. Sex trade workers and their organizations have spoken to me about the dangers, the risks they face, the same dangers and risks, ironically, that the original Supreme Court decision was supposed to address. So I ask the Attorney General, on their behalf, they have tried several times for a meeting. The least you can do is meet with them. I've asked Premier Wynne several times. She's spoken about this. The least you can do is meet with them. They would like to share their concerns and their questions and their suggestions with you. Please do it before these vulnerable people are hurt anymore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from Cambridge. Thank you. Speaker, it's Heritage Day. So I rise today on Heritage Day to pay tribute to ACO Cambridge. I'm a past president of this branch of the provincial body, the Architectural Conservancy of Ontario. ACO Cambridge, a not-for-profit organization, was founded in 1971 by citizens aghast at the demolition of the Stone Central School. Founding members, Pat Roseborn and Jean Fail, are still involved in the mission to promote the preservation of buildings, neighbourhoods and natural areas that are of architectural, historic and cultural significance. As a result of years of advocacy work, Cambridge boasts three heritage conservation districts, many buildings designated under the Ontario Heritage Act, a heritage master plan, a fundraising annual heritage house tour, and a city that's much more inclined to preserve its built heritage and cultural landscapes that surround the Grand and the Speed Rivers. Op-eds, letters to the editor, in increase awareness on heritage issues. Cambridge enjoys increased tourism and economic benefits, such as the revenue from the film industry that often use our stone streetscapes as a filming backdrop, such as Murdoch's Mysteries. Christine Ryer, president of ACO Cambridge, is here meeting with other members today to discuss the importance of preserving our collective provincial heritage. Speaker, I'm extremely proud to be part of a successful organization that ACO Cambridge has become. Happy Heritage Day. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Chatham, Kent, Essex. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, road safety is an ongoing concern for all members of this legislature, and I just want to like to highlight some of the efforts of some of the local volunteers whose tireless efforts help make roads in my community safe every year. Over the Christmas holiday season, Home James volunteers provided a safe ride home for those who had perhaps a little too much Christmas cheer and needed a ride. Not only do they get you home safely, they will also drive your car home, and if needed, they will even escort you to your door. On New Year's Eve alone, they drove 
246 people home, more than doubling that total from the previous year, just on New Year's Eve. Coordinator Jody Hogg was quoted by media uh, about the success of the program. She said, you know, it's always a good time. You never get the same story uh, by helping people out. Recently, at an, at an event in my writing, I learned that there were a total of 98 people who gave many hours of their evening time to Home James. To thank them for their efforts, uh, these individuals received a special certificate from my office in recognition for the time they sacrificed as contributing to the huge success of this program. Home James just completed its third year in Chatham Kent, and on the evenings where they offered their services in the month of December, both the Chatham Kent Police Services and the local OPP uh, indicated that they had zero road fatality. So you see, Speaker, as a critic for community safety, I'm so grateful that this organization helps to keep my community safe. By the way, Speaker, you know there's always room for more communities uh, in Ontario to take up the Home James program. This initiative will keep families intact and their communities safe, especially during the Christmas season. So again, a shout out to the volunteers, the organizers, and the corporate Thank sponsors you. to help make this successful. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you very much. Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. On January 13th, I attended a ceremonial, ceremonial signing at Wilfrid Laurier University, formalizing a partnership between the university and the Daughters for Life Foundation. This partnership will enable Laurier to sponsor two women from the Middle East as they pursue undergraduate studies. The Daughters for Life Foundation was founded by the, a professor of global health at the University of Toronto, Dr. Abu Laish, in memory of his daughters, Bassan, Meyer, and Aya who were killed by an Israeli tank shell during an attack on the Gaza Strip in 2009. The foundation honours the girls' love of learning and is built upon the idea that educating young women will build lasting peace in the Middle East. 66 million girls worldwide are currently deprived of basic education. Many more are removed from schools before completing secondary or post-secondary studies. When women and girls are educated, it impacts not only their own lives, it impacts the lives of their family members, their children, and their communities. When women have access to education, they are better able to speak out about injustice, about their rights, their visions for their communities. Education empowers women to better act as agents of peace. I would like to acknowledge Dr. Abelais for his incredible courage and his vision, and thank Dr. Gavin Brockett and all of the Laurier students who took this idea and turned it into a reality for their school and community will be a stronger community because of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Stevens. The member from Ajax Pickering. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The holy season of Lent commences today, Wednesday, February 18th, and is known specifically as Ash Wednesday. You will see several foreheads similar to mine with the sign of the cross, the crucifix made from ashes. During these holy days, penance is to be considered an important requirement of the Christian life. Fulfillment of this duty involves prayer, works of piety and charity, and self-denial by fulfilling one's obligations more faithfully and especially by observing the prescribed fast and abstinence. In the Roman Rite, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday are days of fasting and abstinence from meat, and all Fridays during Lent should remain free from meat. The law of abstinence from meat binds those who are 14 years of age and older. The law of fasting binds those from ages 18 to 59. One full meal and two smaller snacks a day are allowed during fasting. Lent ends in 40 days on Easter Sunday, and that's April 5th. Three important days at that time are Good Friday, April 3rd, when our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified and died on the cross. Holy Saturday, April 4th, when the resurrection of our Lord Jesus from the tomb was in progress, and the celebration of Easter Sunday, of course, is April 5th. Forty days after the resurrection, one of the most significant days in the Christian calendar, Ascension Thursday, comes when our Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. May you have a holy Easter some 40 days from now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member from Nipissing. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Last Friday, uh, I met with several community care access uh, centre workers on the picket line in North Bay. Their message was clear, Speaker. They don't feel respected by the government. Uh, their clients aren't getting the care they need, 
and they want accountability in the way CCAC funds are being used. Their passion and commitment to the people they serve is heartfelt, and they deserve to be treated with dignity by this government. My riding of Nipissing has seen a, a series of health care and education cuts in recent months due to this government's failed fiscal management. In total, nearly 130 full and part-time jobs have been slashed at the North Bay Regional Health Centre, including 68 RPNs. Uh, this assault on frontline care also includes the elimination of pharmacy techs, uh, operating room attendants, and personal support workers. At Nipissing University, 22 professors are being let go following the layoffs of 16 support staff in December, with a third st stage of uh, restructuring in the works. This government con continues to say one thing and do the other. It's cuts, not jobs. To this government, I say, after your billion-dollar gas plant scandal and billions wasted on poor infrastructure procurement, don't you dare try to balance the books on the backs of workers of Nipissing. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Ottawa, Orleans. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, seven, the people of Ottawa Orleans were able to participate in a momentous cross-partisan community event. I had the pleasure of co-hosting the first annual East End New Year's Levy, along with my federal and municipal counterparts, MP Royal Gallipo, our Mayor Jim Watson, Deputy Mayor Bob Manette, and Councillors Stephen Blair, Jody Medic, and Tim Turney. I would like to sincerely thank the new members of the Orleans team, Joe Dimitic, for having been the leader of this activity. As we are now being called, decided some time ago to reaffirm our commitment to work in a collaborative fashion to tackle the issues that affect our community. Greater collaboration has been one of my biggest commitments since my election. It is why I move my office close to the local councillors and MP in order to support one another and best serve the people of the Great Riding of Ottawa Orleans. The event was a success, and many pounds of non perishable food items raised for the Orleans Cumberland Community Resource Centre. I'm so proud to be part of this community and team as we make and we work to make Orleans the best place to live, work, and play. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. Member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, earlier this month we gathered to celebrate the beginning of Black History Month with the Kingston African and Caribbean Collective, their irrepressible president and Kingston gem Judith Brown, and guest speaker CBC News Adrian Harrowood. We remembered the past in all its pain and glory, and we celebrated the achievements and contributions of black Canadians throughout history. We spoke of translator Matthew de Costa from the early 1600s to the lovely and inspiring multi-world champion athlete Perdita Felicien, whom I had the good fortune to meet yesterday. Of particular note this year was that on January 21st, we celebrated the Honourable Lincoln Alexander Day right across this country for the first time. Honourable Day was our first black member of Parliament in Canada in 1968, and he became the 24th Lieutenant Governor of Ontario in 1985. If we celebrate the extraordinary achievements of any minority or oppressed group, we must also assume responsibility to continue their struggle. We must be ever vigilant to combat racism and persecution and embrace our diversity in the halls of power, in company boardrooms, in our communities and around our dining tables. We must not stop until we have done everything in our power to fight for the justice and equality for all. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Miigwech. I thank all members for their statements. I beg to inform